Hello, I'm Kevin Anderson. I'm a senior technical trainer at the Grunfoss Technical Institute. Now this video will show you some of the basics of how to troubleshoot a Grunfoss SQE constant pressure system using the CU301 indicator lights. Anytime you're troubleshooting an SQE system, you want to refer to the CU301 installation and operations manual, also known as the CU301 INO. Now one of the major benefits of the Grunfoss SQE and SQE pump systems are their built-in protection features for dry run, overload, over temperature, as well as over and under voltage. An additional advantage of the SQE constant pressure system is the easy to use troubleshooting indicator lights on the CU301 control box that can be used to diagnose when those and other issues might occur within a system. Now very important for this video I've left the front cover of the CU301 open and power has been connected to the system. So this entire area, it is live to power. So take extreme care to prevent any possibility of electrical shock when working with the CU301 with an open cover. Now the first indicator light that I'm gonna mention for this video is the on off button on the CU301. So the green and red indicator lights on the on off button indicate the pump operating conditions as follows. So if the green indicator light is on, the system is operational. Now if the green indicator light is off, it means that currently the system is not operational. A red indicator light permanently on means that the pump has been stopped by the on-off button. And a red indicating light that's flashing means that the CU301 is communicating with an R100 or with the Grunfoss Go. Now the on-off button can be used to start or stop the pump and it can also be used to resetting any alarms by just pressing the on and off button. Now if the on off button is pressed for more than five seconds, the pump will start irrespective of any active fault, alarm, or indications or sensor signals. Now when the on off button is released, the pump will stop if the alarm still exists. Now one very important thing about the on off button, setting this button to off does not remove power from the pump. So before doing any service to the pump, make sure that you disconnect the system from the electrical power supply. All this button does is enable the pump to run. It does not disconnect power to the system. The next indicator lights are the pressure setting lights. These lights indicate the current constant pressure setting for this system. The next indicator lights that I'll mention are the pump running lights. When the pump's not operating, none of the lights are on. So if we open a valve in the system, and we press the on-off button. Now you'll see the indicator lights lighting, showing that the pump's operational. Now the first protection feature mentioned in the introduction was the dry run protection. When the pump experiences a dry run condition, the pump will automatically stop, and the red dry running indicator light will light up. Now the dry run will automatically reset after five minutes. However, again, that setting can also be changed using the R100 or the Grunfoss Go. And there are more details on the dry run protection in the CU301 INO. The next light that I'm gonna mention for this video is the service indicator light. And this light will be permanently on if any of the following alarm situations occurs. So if there's a defective sensor, an overload, over temperature, speed reduction, a voltage alarm, or no contact to pump. Now to identify the cause of the service alarm, it is necessary to open up the front cover on the CU301. So next we're gonna examine some of the internal LEDs on the CU301. If you look here, we have currently three green lights. The top light is a 24 volt DC supply. If it's a permanent green light, then the internal 24 volt DC supply is okay. And if the second light is a permanent green, then the internal 10 volt DC supply is okay. And if the third light is permanent green light, then the internal 5 volt DC supply is okay. If any of those lights is a permanent red, it means that the DC supply has been overloaded and the CU301 control box needs to be replaced. Then we also have the other nine indicator lights in this system. The control indicator flashing green light means that the pump control is working correctly. The second light is the minimum speed. You'll get a permanent yellow light when the pump is running at the minimum speed of 3000 RPMs. The next light is the maximum speed. 
you get a permanent yellow light when the pump is running at the maximum speed of 10,700 RPMs. The next light is the sensor defective. You get a permanent red light when the sensor signal is out of range. Then the next light is the overload. You'll get a permanent red light when the motor load has exceeded the stop limit. Then the next light is the over temperature. You get a permanent red light when the motor temperature exceeds the stop limit. The next light is the speed reduction. You get a permanent red light when the pump speed is reduced. The next light is the voltage alarm. You get a permanent red light when the voltage supply is out of range. Then the next light is a no contact to pump and you'll get a permanent red light when there's no communication between the CU301 and the SQE pump. Now for more information on the parameters of overload, over temperature, speed reduction, over and under voltage, as well as the dry running, see section 8 of the technical data on the CU301. So I'm going to give just a quick demonstration on a sensor defective light. So if the sensor is defective, so I'm going to just disconnect the brown lead from our sensor connection. And now you'd notice that the service indicator light is illuminated as well as the sensor defective light inside the CU301 control box. So then if you reconnect the sensor, the sensor defective light goes out and the service indicator light is off. Then you just press the on off button to reset the alarms and everything's back to normal.